Hi, this is Lindsay Jervis from Kodai Inspired Classroom, and today I'm going to be talking about long-range planning and specifically a resource for long-range planning that's available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. If you go to my Teachers Pay Teachers store, just by searching Lindsay Jervis on Teachers Pay Teachers, and scroll down a bit till you find my Ready, Set, Plan, Yearly Planning for the Elementary Music Classroom. That's the resource that I'm looking at today. This resource includes yearly plans and grade level song lists that are really helpful to get you started on creating some long range planning for yourself. Once you download the zip file, Within the zip file, you can find a song list for each grade level from kindergarten through fifth grade, as well as a master planner August through May Excel sheet, and a file that says read first, yearly planning. I'm going to click on that. This read first document has some tips to get you started. It talks about what's included, the yearly plans for kindergarten through fifth grade, and the song list for each grade level and it kind of walks you through how to use each one and uh, emphasizing the flexibility of everything and helping you to cater it to your specific schedule and um, needs. So I'm going to get out of that. I just wanted you to know that that was there. And today we're, I'm going to really look at the Excel Make it bigger. Drag it over so we can see the beginning. Okay. When you open it up, it's in a protected view, but if you want to edit anything, you just click on Enable Editing. Now, within this Excel file, I have a sheet for each grade level. So you can see the grade level in the top left corner, but if you click on the bottom where it says Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3, Sheet 4, 5, and 6, those are each one of those sheets is for a different grade level. So if I click to sheet two and drag it across back to the beginning, now I'm in grade one. And so it's set up like that for each grade level, that it's all within one Excel file. You don't have to open up a new file for each grade level. It's all right there. So it kind of makes it easier to keep it organized. Now when I look at my kindergarten plans for the whole year. Since I use a Kodai concept of teaching, I go through a prepare, present, practice with each concept. So if I look at August under the practice, I'm not practicing any concepts because I haven't prepared and presented them. But if I look under prepare and present, I can see that the kindergarten concepts I'm preparing are four voices and fast flow. And hopefully by the end of August, I would hope to present four voices, but that all depends on when school starts and my scheduling, how frequent I see them, how long those class periods are. So if I don't get to present four voices in August, it's okay. I can just copy it and move it to September because all of this is adjustable. So during this time, I'm wanting to sing, song and play, sing songs and play games that help to develop repertoire specifically for four voices and fast flow. So when I go back to those song lists for each grade level, if I look at the kindergarten one, I can find songs and finger plays and chants to specifically help with four voices and fast flow. So that's what I would plug into my concept plans and my individual lesson plans for those concepts. But this is really just looking at the long range planning, like the big scope and sequence of my full year. And what I'm wanting to accomplish in each grade level each year and kind of giving me a bigger perspective of what I'm wanting to get through from kindergarten through the time they leave me in fifth grade. So then if I look over at the next grade level, first grade, I can see that in August I am practicing some concepts. These are all the concepts that we got through in kindergarten. Four voices, fast, slow, loud, soft, high, low, steady beat, and hopefully beat versus rhythm. Now, it's important to spend a little bit of time practicing those concepts that you 
got through at the end of last year because you might get new students or sometimes they just need a refresher on those things before you start introducing new things. So at the beginning of each grade level, I always bring back the concepts from the, the previous year and kind of review during the first month of school. Also during this time, I'm going to start preparing some new concepts. So down under the prepare present, it says prepare ta and tt and prepare so me. I'm not presenting anything new in the month of August, but if I look over at September, then it does say present ta and tt. And if they aren't ready for that, like say I didn't get to beat versus rhythm in kindergarten, and I am not quite ready to present ta and tt in September, but it might be able to happen in October. Oh, sorry, I just made that bigger. Um, then I can just paste it over there. I'm going to delete that because I don't want it to save it that way. It also takes into account some different things that you might have going on throughout the year, like maybe in October you want to include some Halloween songs or holiday songs in December, or maybe you have a Veterans Day program. that your students are participating in. All of those things are things that you can add to this spreadsheet to kind of help keep you organized and help you look at the bigger picture of what you've got going on and then planning around those other things that you know you have to accomplish. So in my left hand column over here under practice and prepare present I've included kindergarten concepts in the practice stage on the first grade page as well as rhythm and pitch and form. I didn't have form on my kindergarten list. And on my kindergarten list, I had this fuchsia row for the kindergarten concepts that I was preparing and presenting. So each grade level might look a little bit different, but it's basically the same layout for each one. Now if I take a look at fifth grade, and and if I'm not quite there by the time I get to fifth grade in August, that's fine. I just go and find where they were in the sequence. Like maybe they're just getting ready for tea theory. Maybe, you know, it just depends. I know with programs and things, sometimes grade levels get behind. And I think it's better to go at the pace of the students than feel like you have to really adhere to a strict timeline for your sequence. As long as your sequence is happening in the order that you had planned and you're continuing to progress with your kids each year, I think that's the ultimate goal. I'm going to go back to that zip file and show you some other things that are included. For each grade level, there's a song list. So I'm going to take a look at the, kinder, or the first grade song list since it's the first one here. And again, this is totally editable, so if you have other songs that you love for Study Beat, you can just add them in down below. So when I look over, I'm going to go back to that Excel. If I was in first grade planning, trying to plan my individual lesson plans, and I know that in September or August, I'm, I'm wanting to prepare and tell and TT and so me, then I would go to that song list for that grade level and see, okay, here's my song list for Ta and TT. It goes on to the next page. And my song list for So Me. And a lot of those overlap. That's great. So I would want to plug those, some of those songs into my individual lesson plans, as well as maybe some steady beat songs and some beat versus rhythm songs. And those may or may not be Ta and TT songs because I'm reviewing some of those kindergarten concepts at the beginning of first grade. I'm going to close out of this and briefly take you into another grade level song list. Look at kindergarten real quick. Enable editing. So if you were working on four voices or fast flow, you could pull some of the things from this song list and put them into your lesson plans. On the song list, if 
a lot of these songs are can be found in the American Methodology or in the Orange Book, the 150 folk songs. If you run into a song that you're not familiar with and you want to contact me, feel free to contact me to see if I have a source for that song or if I can just send you the song. Um, I do have sources for almost all of them. There are some songs that I have on the list that I haven't been able to find in my folk song collection yet that I'm still searching for. So if it's one that I'm still searching for, then I would just tell you that I'm still looking for it myself too, because there are a couple on there. But that's a look at my long range planning set. And if you have any questions, please just let me know. But I hope that would be a helpful resource for you to look at and to see how I lay out my yearly plans for each grade level and what songs are on my list. And of course, there's other songs that I plug into those, but some of those are the, the core ones that I plan for each year. Thanks for watching.